In Berlin, the whole atmosphere changed. When Einstein looked out of his window, he would see a lot of patriotism. In his eyes, a whole nation went crazy. All of Einstein's expectations of the kind of city he was going to live in disappear. They're gone. Hundreds of thousands of German young men marched enthusiastically. His best colleagues, Planck and Haber, were enthusiastic about the war. His close friend Fritz Haber, like Einstein, was born German and Jewish. Fritz Haber converted to Christianity, and he tried to assimilate as much as possible. One of his great moments of pride when he actually received a commission in the German army. Really almost unheard of award for a converted Jew. Einstein saw this as ridiculous. Haber said, I'm a chemist. I understand the chemistry of the chlorine atom very well. I know that chlorine gas is poisonous. Can I turn this into a useful weapon? Haber felt he could construct a devastating enough weapon that it would end the war quickly thus a humane outcome. The Institute Haber directs is turned into testing gas to be deployed on the Western Front. Einstein has an office in Haber's Institute. Einstein was disgusted by the eagerness with which Haber, first amongst his colleagues, but many of his colleagues, went looking for ways to kill people and kill them more effectively. Haber was one of the first to develop terrible weapons out of the potential of science. Early in the war, Haber's new mystery weapon, poison gas, is tested on a Belgian battlefield. Haber was there and said, release the weapon. This low cloud drifts over the battlefield, and the cloud just sort of forms. This was the first time this ever happened. Troops had seen things that looked much worse than this cloud. And the effect was devastating. I mean, the troops were just blown out of their trenches. Haber saw thousands of people die, thousands of soldiers, about 5,000 soldiers. Your lungs begin to fill with fluid, and as the deterioration of your body continues, you can lie there on dry ground, in effect, drowning. Albert Einstein takes a look at his close friend and his, you know, intimate professional colleague and says, in effect, you're pathological. This is grotesque. He writes a letter to a friend in Switzerland that says all our supposed technological progress is like an ax in the hands of a madman. Haber never resented it. And it's so strange that he befriended Einstein so closely. They were living on different planets. The war posed a big dilemma for Einstein because in his personal relationships he respected and was even fond of his colleagues but um, rejected their wholehearted support of the war. He comes across this very publicly hyped and published document called the Manifesto of 93, signed by 93 leading German academics, including the people who brought him to Berlin and the people he most values, Haber, and above all, Max Planck. The Manifesto says Germany had to fight, it was justified and morally acceptable to fight in this war. And this shocked Einstein. In effect, a betrayal. This was the moment when Einstein realized that there were some things about life outside physics that were important enough that he had to actually go out on a limb and take some personal risk to defend. He actually tries to present a counter manifesto of other German academics who say, no, there's something else out there besides national pride, national um, competitiveness, national fury. And four people signed the manifesto. It goes nowhere. Never published. It fails.